Hello YouTube viewers and random Terminator fans, today I will be reviewing this, which is the Hot Toys Terminator T-800 Battle Damage version 1-6 scale collectible figure. And a huge thank you to Sideshow Collectibles for sending this out to us to review. Taking a look at the box, at the top we get the logo from the first movie, while below it we have this larger image of the figure itself, which looks very grainy and stylized with this colour hue running through it, and these red lines running off in different directions from behind it and around to the sides of the box, just like on the iconic poster for the movie. I love the design of the text here, with the T-800 blackened and worn away towards the bottom, and the figure's code of MM. MS-238 printed inside the T. What's so great here is that the Battle Damage version text is actually printed on the insert behind the front of the box, with this section of the front missing like it's been shot out, so I thought that was particularly clever. Continuing the theme of the movie's poster, we also get some text from it too. Of course, if you want to read it, pause the video. The back contains all the usual legal guff and product information, but the layout of it is excellent, as it's styled like the actual Terminator vision, while behind it you can see this is lifted from the scene in the movie where the Terminator is approaching Sarah and Kyle's motel room. Lifting off the front of the box you can see this little insert which has a few bullet holes in it, plus that red line design from the front also makes an appearance here, but it now contains the names of all the highly skilled people who put this figure together. Taking away the insert reveals the figure and its many accessories which are all let out and displayed nicely within this plastic tray. So that's about it for the packaging, so let's move on to the figure itself. Okay, so here we have the T-800 Terminator, and it's just a work of art. Looking at the head sculpt, it's undeniably Arnold Schwarzenegger circa 1984. The sculpting on the face is just perfect, what with the little imperfections and bumps on his forehead there, creases where he's frowning, and even the sort of bag under his one human eye has been included. The cheekbones are also visible there too, and his strong jawline around the bottom of his face. It all looks so good, and really does look like skin, what with the subtle dimples sculpted into it. What really sets this off though, is the paint apps as the skin has been given a slight glossy look, just like the makeup used on Schwarzenegger in the movie, to make his skin seem somewhat synthetic. And what's more, some great shading has been applied to really bring those features to life, and also highlight that 5 o'clock shadow around his chin. The exposed eye is just brilliant. It's great how sunken in and realistic it looks. You can see the red eye embedded in the endoskeleton's eye socket, while the metallic silver paint apps have been coated with this glossy red, and as has the edge of this wound, which effectively adds to the gore element. The hair looks great, being from the latter half of the movie, Arnie hair is much shorter and spiked up, and Hot Toys have done an excellent job here with matching its style. As well as that we have the various brush strokes on the sides and back, but the one thing that does detract from this is the quite obvious joint on the sides of the head, even if it has been sculpted to look like part of his hair style. Moving down to the torso, the Terminator is of course sporting his black leather jacket. This is made from a very thin yet sturdy material, and you can even see the leather design moulded into it, which is a fantastic touch. On the collar and lapels you can make out this stitching around the edges, and those silver buttons too, while a silver zip runs down both sides of the jacket, and you can even make out the individual teeth on there, plus the actual zipper tag at the bottom. Smaller zips are present on each side representing pockets, while another pocket has been included on the left hand side with this flap above it, and another zip pocket beside it. On the back we get some further buttons damage, this time there are a few subtle bullet holes and some larger pieces of damage on the left shoulder blade, where pieces of the jacket have been removed completely, allowing you to see through to his grey t-shirt, which has been effectively blood stained. Some corset-like laces are present on either side, while this larger belt is present on the bottom which wraps around to the front, where you can make out some silver notches on one side and a silver buckle on the other. The arms contain more of that stitching as well as open zippers on the wrists, while the hands are in a relaxed open palmed pose, and he's wearing some black leather gloves which have an excellent creased and wrinkled material effect on there as well. Removing his jacket puts him into what I like to call his surgery mode and reveals his sleeveless grey top. The material design here is perfect and matches that of the t-shirt worn in the movie with those darker specks of grey pattern present on there. A nice little chest wound has been cut into the middle of the torso with some brilliant blood stained effect around its edges with some glossy red paint applied to the torso beneath. A smaller version of this wound can be seen on his ab wall there too, while on the back we just get some red stains. The arms contain some great sculpting of Arnie's muscles but a nice little extra here is that his right forearm actually has its flesh peeled away, revealing the pistons underneath, which is just so accurate to the movie, and really does allow you to recreate that surgery scene where he fixes his arm and his eye. I just wish a pair of ungloved hands had come with this figure, and perhaps even a little scalpel accessory. And yes, for those of you who are into that sort of thing, the torso under the t-shirt has been sculpted to match Arnie's massive muscles, as seen in the 1984 movie, while it also gives you a better look at those glossy, bloodied bullet wounds. Plus, much of the torso was made from soft rubber, which really aids the figure's arm articulation. 
He's wearing those dark tan sort of coloured trousers which have some nice details of belt loops and pockets around the top with some flaps covering the pockets on the back and two larger pockets have been stitched onto the sides of both legs. Finally he's sporting his black leather punk boots complete with that silver spiked accessory around his ankle and the straps with the silver hoops on there too. And of course not forgetting that awesome creased and wrinkled effect. The underside of the boots is just plain but has a tiny smidge of white legal garbage printed onto both so overall for detail it's frankly immaculate. Turning to articulation, the head can do the full 360 degree exorcist style twist. And being on a ball joint, it can swivel from side to side and not up and down. The arms could do a full 360 at the shoulder, but are hindered by the jacket. But there is a small pivot at this joint too, allowing the arm to pivot forward and back. The arms can move out to 90 degrees, plus there's a full 360 at the top of the arm, but again the jacket hinders this. There is a double joint on the elbow, so the forearm can bend in fully, almost making him look like he's saluting. The wrist offers a full 360, plus it can pivot from side to side here too. The Terminator offers an ab crunch, allowing his torso to bend forwards and back, and pivot to the sides as well, and full 360 degree waist articulation has been included here too. The legs kick forward to 45 degrees, but are again hindered by the clothing, so can't move fully out to do the splits. There's a slight swivel at the top of the leg. There's a double bend on the knee, but it only allows the lower leg to move back to 90 degrees, while finally the boot can spin through a full 360, and pivot forwards and back and to the sides, so there is a large amount of articulation on this figure, allowing him to be displayed in some highly dynamic poses. As for features, naturally you can't have a Terminator with an exposed eye without wanting the eye to light up red. Fortunately, that's exactly what this figure offers. To activate its light effects, remove the back of the head, which is held on quite securely via a magnet. This exposes the battery compartment, where two button cell batteries have already been installed, and a small round button. Pressing this will cause the exposed eye to light up red. This looks excellent and really sets the figure off, but unfortunately there's no real way to turn the light off, instead it will stay lit for around 40 seconds before automatically switching off. I really wish that you could just switch the light on and leave it on for when it's on display, like the arc reactor and repulsors on the Hot Toys Iron Man figures, as this feels like more of a gimmick from a kid's toy than the feature of a collectible meant for display. When it comes to accessories, Hot Toys have supplied a multitude of extras. First up we get an entirely alternate head sculpt. It's easy to attach as the old head has just popped off and the new one has snapped into place. As you can see, it's the same face sculpt, but with much more damage from closer to the end of the movie when he's run over by the oil tanker. This just looks particularly nasty and I love it. Frankly what you're looking at here is more or less a scaled down version of the puppet head created by Stan Winston. So on top of that excellent skin sculpting scene on the other head, you can additionally get all this brilliant damage where the flesh has been stripped away revealing large portions of the endoskeleton underneath. On the slightly less battered side we get some fantastic dirtied marks all over his face as well as a few cuts and gashes which contain a hint of silver in there but flipping it over to the other side all hell has broken loose. At the top the hair has been worn away along with the flesh to reveal the dome of the endoskeleton skull which has actually been recessed into the head adding to the effect that the flesh has been worn off and I love the great contrast in paint apps here from the matte skin to the glossy blood to the chrome metallic silver it all just works perfectly. And again, below it, the skin on the cheek has been ripped away, revealing a lot of the metal jaw and various pistons beneath. It's also three-dimensional, and the sheer attention to detail is simply outstanding. Naturally, as well as this, the damage to the eye, as seen in the other head, makes a return here too, as does its light effects, which operate in the exact same manner. So this alternate head really opens up the display options for the figure. But let's talk firepower, because in the end, what's a Terminator without a large arsenal of weaponry? First of all, he comes with a six-shooter revolver, which has some nice detailing on the brown grip, while the cylinder actually moves out from the body of the gun and can also rotate, and even the hammer can be subtly moved there too. Next up is the iconic 45 long slide with laser sighting, which has been expertly recreated here, complete with the fact that it can be pulled back and cocked, and what's more, the ammo clip can be slid out from the bottom, where you can see the round inside, so that's just a great touch. Here we have the AR-18 assault rifle from the attack on the police station, gloriously recreated with some fantastic detail on the sides there, while this cocking handle is on a spring and can be pulled back to load it. A material strap has been attached to the gun as well, allowing Arnie to carry it over his shoulder should you wish to display him like this, and the magazine is also detachable, revealing tiny detailing of bullets inside. And completing the ensemble, we get the 12 gauge autoloader pump action shotgun, which has been beautifully recreated here with a material loop on the back, an actual working pump on the barrel, and another silver spring loaded cocking handle on the side. But what good are all these weapons if the Terminator can't hold them? Well fortunately some alternate hands have been included, four pairs in total including the relaxed palm hands we've already seen. The rest are all gloved and contain that creased and wrinkled material sculpting, but one set are moulded into fists, 
and another set of sculpted to hold the weapons. So utilizing both of these will allow you to pose the Terminator as though he's assaulting the police station while wielding his assault rifle and shotgun. Or a combination of one of these hands and a fisted hand makes for some great poses with the smaller handguns. We also get these open pan battle damage variants, where the flesh has been ripped away from the fingers and knuckles revealing the silver endoskeleton underneath, and they're on the insides of the pants and on the tips of some of the fingers too. These work perfectly in tandem with the alternate head to really make the figure look like how the Terminator appeared during the final chase after being hit and dragged by the truck. Finally, another alternate hand has been included, this time to help better pose the figure when he's holding the assault rifle or shotgun to make it appear as though he's firing it. Two alternate wrist joints also come with this figure, just in case the current ones are damaged when on display. Play. And naturally, the black sunglasses are part of this set as well, and they're actually made from translucent plastic so you can sort of see through them. These work so well with the less damaged face sculpt, where they sit securely on his nose covering up the eye damage. And due to their translucent material construction, when the red eye is illuminated, it actually shines through the glasses, which is an excellent effect. The Terminator also comes with a base, and it looks fantastic. It's not your standard Hot Toys base, but it does come with that crotch cradle thing that holds the figure securely onto it. As you can see, it's been sculpted to look like part of the freeway from the end chase, complete with the two yellow lines running across it, the detail of the concrete, and some of the debris and blood effects from where the Terminator was hit by the truck, alongside some very precisely detailed bullets. And completing the detail, this awesome pipe bomb has been sculpted on there. I almost wish it was removable, as it would make a fantastic accessory, but as it stands, it just completes the look. A tiny plaque is present on the front of the stand with the Terminator logo and T-800 printed below. And what's more, the stand features light effects. Batteries are not included, but it does take three AAAs, which power these two LEDs on the front, which can be angled to point at the figure itself, which more than makes up for its timed eye light when on display. This is just the cherry on the cake as far as I'm concerned. This is gorgeous. Doing a size comparison, the Terminator is somewhat larger than the Hot Toys Tony Stark, and is around the same size as the die-cast Iron Man Mark 42. So overall, what do I think of this figure? Well, it's perfect. Honestly, it is. The one tiny issue I have with it is that the red eye light doesn't stay illuminated, but beyond that, and that sort of join on the back of the head, this is another excellent figure from Hot Toys. The detail on the face sculpt continues to impress me. The attention to detail really makes it look uncannily like Arnold Schwarzenegger, while the damage effects to the head sculpts are so gruesomely accurate that they will please even the biggest fanboy. The clothing as well is majorly accurate, and the removable jacket offers a great look at the damage to the torso and arm. The articulation means that the figure can be displayed in a world of poses, and coupled with the interchangeable hands means he can be displayed while holding all of the included weapon accessories in a badass yet realistic manner. Finally, that base is just exceptional and really gives this figure the look of a genuine collectible. This Hot Toys figure gets an extremely high recommendation from me, and to be released 30 years after the first movie, and what with next year's Terminator Genesis revisiting the events of the first film, this figure could be no more relevant than it is now, and a great way to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the franchise and your love of this iconic movie character. And so that brings us to the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to say subscribe for more videos. And keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. And remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye. Okay,